Hi, my name is Brianne from Aurora University's Student Success Department, and today I want to talk to you about building relationships, specifically using conversation skills. So oftentimes you might see uh, pictures or movies, TV shows, TikTok videos where everyone's having a great time and relationships look really easy. But the truth is that making connections with others, especially when you're starting, isn't always picture perfect. Um, it's actually not uncommon to feel nervous or uncomfortable, overwhelmed, stressed, and you might even avoid new social situations or, or uh, making connections with others. In fact, a lot of the students at Aurora University and at universities across the nation report that making connections with others is really difficult. So if you feel that way or have experienced it, you're not alone. But there's a lot of value to having relationships, to building them and maintaining them. Of course, there's your own mental and emotional well-being, but also when we wanna have our own needs and wants met, you usually need to do so by connecting with others. And then we have to meet the expectations of others. Those are people like our professors, our bosses, our colleagues, our family members. Um, so building relationships and having those skills is really valuable. And here's the thing, one of the most effective ways to make connections is through conversation. That might sound really simple. It may be really easy for you to do with the people you already know well, but it can be really tricky with new people. So I wanna talk a little bit about the building blocks of conversation. There's really two things. There's questions and there's comments. And so today I wanna to cover a little bit about what those look like. It may sound so simple to you, but when you really break down the conversations that you have, it can help you build uh, those new, new relationships and new acquaintances that you have into something deeper and more meaningful. So first we have comments. People are really good at comments generally. This is how we state things about ourselves, our thoughts, our opinions, our viewpoints, and our feelings. We might share a story that we had or just make a statement about something. These typically focus on ourselves and they're okay. They, they can draw interest in, but too many comments can monopolize a conversation, especially on uh, depending on the quantity of comments that you make, the length of them, the quality, if they're relevant or interesting, and the context, where you're at at the time and who you're with. So it's really important to have a balance of questions and comments when you are in conversations, especially when new connections. So appropriate and relevant questions show our interest and care for others. They help us get important information from others, and they can even help guide the conversation towards what we wanna talk about. So when you're thinking of questions, there's actually different types of questions that you can use strategically in conversation. The first is initiating questions, there's also follow-up questions, and then there's bridging questions. I'm gonna talk a little bit about all three of these. So initiating questions just get things started. These are really useful for when you walk in a classroom early and there's one or two other people there, or um, when you sit down uh, at an interview uh, with a, a new person, when you walk up to a table at the career fair, um, questions are a great way to get conversations going. It's usually fairly casual, but it might be deeper based on your relationship and comfort level with the other person. The next type of question is follow-up questions. These are just the essential questions that keep conversations going and show interest and care in what others have already said or what you remember about them. They can also help you gain further information. So follow-up questions are based on something that's already been said in the conversation. Finally, there's bridging questions. These are a secret ingredient for people who may be losing interest in a conversation. A a lot of times the people you're engaging with might be talking about something you're not super interested in. It's hard to abruptly change the topic, so a lot of people just sort of disengage. A bridging question bridges one topic with another and it gently changes the topic while still acknowledging what has been said. So if someone's talking a lot about um, an action movie they saw, you might say something like, I'm not the biggest fan of action movies, but have you seen any good comedies lately? It's a way to acknowledge what's been said and bridge it to something that you are interested in. So I wanna encourage everyone today to practice and grow your conversation skills. 
Think of appropriate questions to ask new acquaintances. This is really important though. Avoid controversial and overly personal topics when asking questions of people who are new to you or just acquaintances. You can also get to know your boss, your professor, and classmates better by asking some questions. And of course, you can continue to deepen connections with existing friends and family. I have one last tip for you. By asking questions and making relevant comments, you can show interest in a person, even if you aren't particularly interested in the topic. So good luck with your conversation skills. Thank you.